December the 20th, 2016. Started a mighty, mighty pain. Sam Butler. And I've never done a saltwater fish, so this is kind of a first for me. It's a mighty, mighty. Decided to put an artificial squid lure going across. He'll be coming, turning, coming forward, cutting into the fish. So, right now I'm putting on my acrylic paste. And I'm going to shape him where he's going to actually be, particularly in this area, coming forward in the squid and everything. So that way it gives the appearance of it's coming at you. There'll be a lot of blues and greens, a lot of colors in this. So, first one I've done, i got another one over here, I'm working on the same kind of for his brother Daniel, and that's a uh, speckled perch I'm working on. This fish have some pretty fins, I'm not real familiar with them, I've seen pictures of them before, so I pretty well know what they look like, if it's so in there. thing is, is I gotta let this tack up as it goes because these fish are very smooth skin, so I have to keep smoothing it out. This one's gonna take a lot of model ways. So. I gotta get some more. Sculpt in the face last because I want to bring it out to make sure it appears well beyond. As it tapers up and this comes out, I've got to make sure the face as it's coming forward has to be more into the foreground than most that, and the squid has to be beyond that to be the effect of everything else this way, that way, and forward. So, well, that's the plan anyway. He's away from his, looks like a documentary, I'm watching him live feed, he's away from his camera right now with those guys, so it's just, I like to watch him paint, so, we're some good painters now, I, like, I get a lot of inspiration, Just I just like watching, I just paint in a different way, I like, I overcomplicate everything, I gotta have mine sticking out. I'm just, I like being different. Because it's kind of self taught, so. Kind of sticks with you. You can't change an old dog. It's just what he does. Yeah, can't change him. Like, like I say, I'm self taught, so. I'm like the old dog. I just. Sometimes I alter just a little bit, but that's just because I have to score to the painting style I got to use at the time. Got to keep in mind this stuff's gonna it's gonna draw in there. So if you put it in, got to remember whatever's really sticking out. It's going to draw in, and that's going to be your highest point where you put the highest point in. And then it tapers down, that all will be good, but it'll draw in so much you can barely tell it. Yet sometimes you have to keep working it up, bringing up the layers as you go, and it's pretty forgiving on that. But the thing about it is, with this stuff, once you put it on there, once it sets up, it's over. I mean, it embeds into the into the cloth, into the gesso, so it ain't like you can just go back and change it because it's there, it's permanent, man. It's some tough stuff, pretty durable. All right, getting 
some good results here. I'm just layering on getting it closed right now. And I'll come in and see if I need to add some more here in a few minutes and bring up any points. I kind of like putting in the fans last. These right here are going to be very, they're really going to be all wave because he's this huge fans he's got. And those are like really flexible, so I want to kind of wave them in to get a good effect on them. Kind of building toward the head. So that's going to be the closest point. I'll go through and trim it off as I go along with it. Edges and make sure when you do this to take any of this and cut this in hard, you want to cut your where you want to break your lines at because if you leave any out here, it's there from now on. And unless you're going to put something in over it, like this fan, I can put it over that. So this will really, unless it's really sticking out here, this won't matter because I'm going to take them out of the picture anyway. But you got to make sure that uh, uh, you just don't have any of that out there where you don't want it. If it's flat in the water, it's going to come back and bite you. It's going to be smooth. I'm going to bring it up toward his head carefully because I've already done a lot of work in that. I don't know. I have to go back and work on it again because I have to keep smoothing it out. I'm actually taking on this down. This is appearing to be rounded. The bottom's going to actually flatten into the canvas. Give the appearance of a roundness, a breaking point. I'm going to try to keep the extra off of it because what happened is it has to stay damp. You don't want to dry it. At the same time, you don't want it to be pulling it either because it will pull everything with it. You have got to have a welder or someone doing this. But when you're fine texturing it because it's kind of like you're seeing it with your eyes. Just like a welder does. He knows where it's at. He never really hardly touches it except slightly. Very slightly. But I keep in mind every time you're smoothing this out, you're taking some off too, so you're removing it too. So. Good 
You can also, when you get a death point anywhere, you can paint that in. Because it's going into the taper of the water anyway. Just down here, I'm not going to worry about too much because I'm going to carve this in here now. When I get down here, that fan's going to have to fit just right in here. Get it there. Once you get it where you want it, it's good to go. So I still got to get this taper right in there just right. It's getting there. trying to keep as many lines out of as possible when it dries, it's smooth out. So, uh, nothing high sticking up. Be 
his lines out of it. Okay, at this point, I'm just going to get very delicate here. that way. I should be able to do something with it. That's the only thing if you do. This is all going to be built up here anyway, right here. That's going to be as heavy as I am everything, so. This is all cool. This all be I want to separate, but I don't want to put the gap in there. So I'm trying to get an effect. See, I'm saying that I'm not feeling well. I'm not actually feeling. Send me a fact. Yeah, I got my garden going on. I posted a bunch of purple top turnips. I got so many of them, I gotta give them away. So people are blinging in on my Facebook. I guess they might want some. Let's see what I got. I think that'll work for the moment. Still got a little high spot here and there. I might have to dock this real quick. Let's Smooth it out as much as possible. Yeah, okay.
think we're really close. I'm just flooding it. Letting it flood itself across it. I think we're almost there. Let's tack up. And yeah, we'll come back with it again. So I almost messed up just that uh, fast. Just that fast. See, so, yeah, I'm seeing a little bit up here I'm not happy with. Because, you know, if this was a bass or a speck or something like that, a brim wouldn't be a big deal. Because they're, they got scales. This guy here, I mean, I'm sure he's got scales, but he's just too smooth. Now I'll come in and touch this up. I gotta do that. Then anyhow, that cross. So. so I really don't want to touch it because I pretty well got it ahead already. The problem is I'm seeing just a little roughness in there. I want to make sure. This smooth skin color here. Exactly what he's gonna look like smooth. I don't want any rough on him, I want him to look smooth. And I think I've pretty well got it. As it thickens, you can, it's a little more forgiving as you go on that too. It's a little forgiving. I think we're going to leave it at that. Leave the head a little bold and then into a taper because he's actually coming forward with that. Yeah, they come on their head reminds me of a sperm whale, the way it looks. So I'm going to have a hard taper forward. Leave that forward. And that way it pokes out. Alright. There we go. So we've got for now. I'll come back in here and touch all this up because i still got a lot to do. But this I'm happy with. That'll smooth out good and get the fans in.